Same setup formationally. Wolf now looking far side. Goes for Coots. Coots. Catch. Touchdown. Old Dominion. Zach Coots with 101 to go. The Monarchs have tied the football game at 13. This is the ODU Coaches Show, sponsored by Chartway Federal Credit Union. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Chartway Old Dominion Football Coaches Show. The time for fun in the sun has arrived as the Monarchs get set for their first ever Sunbelt game in program history. Ricky Ronnie gives us the lowdown as the silver and blue get set to start league play. Well, Coach, conference play has arrived. Obviously, with the one and no mentality, you guys approach every game the same. Monarch Nation, though, probably pretty excited about it. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, even with the one and no mentality, I think, you know, going into conference play and, and, and knowing that, uh, you know, these are teams you're going to see year in and year out and, and, and those sort of things, I think that's important. And, and obviously, uh, you know, being the first Sun Belt game, I, I know it'll be um, exciting for everybody. It, it'll be the third time we've had a Sun Belt officiating crew, though, so that'll be about the same. But uh, you know, I do think that it'll be a little bit different for that. Well, and you, you mentioned the, the newness of the whole thing. So even when you were in Conference USA, I'm sure there was a little bit, like you were saying, hey, we see these teams every year. We have some natural rivalries here. But does the newness add some excitement when you step back? Well, I think that that's the one thing that's a little different for us is, you know, because last year was our first year as a coaching staff of actually coaching the games. You know, we only got one year in Conference USA, so now we get a whole new conference. So we, for us, it's all new again. Um, I know for some of the players it might be, uh, you know, last year might have been a little repetitive, but we had so many new players last year too. I don't know. So I think it's, it's again, there's a lot of newness to it. I think that, you know, maybe the repetitive nature will come up as we get down the line, and some of our guys have been playing for you know two, three years, but um, for for now, it's 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 all it's all new, brand new for all of us. But you know, for the ACC, SEC, Pac-12, some of those schools get right down to conference play in week one. Do you like having those three non-conference games to to see where you guys are and what you need to work on before you dive into the conference portion of your schedule? Yeah, I think that's kind of traditionally how college football works. You know what I mean? I know that they've they've gone to that other way for. I mean, let's call Space Bay. They've gone the other way for TV and money, right? And and so I get it, but uh, um, you you'd like to be able to kind of work your way into it and know, okay, hey, now we're in our conference play and all that sort of stuff. And obviously, we have one more non-conference game after this. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the most part, I I, I like. For in terms of those sort of things, I'm kind of traditionalist. I'd like that's how I'd always prefer it. So look at the numbers right now: 13th in the Sun Belt in total offense, 14th in total defense. But in your evaluation, I'm sure it goes beyond the numbers, and there are a lot of factors that go into things like that. How would you evaluate each unit here, three games in, going into this conference opener? I just think we need to be more consistent across the board. I, I think that we've shown at times that we can move the ball against anybody. I mean, we're playing um, some good teams. If you, you know, you follow through, I mean, you know. Teams have played pretty darn well. The teams we've played, and they've, they've, they've had some, you know, some good games. So I think that we just need to make sure we're more consistent. When we play our game, we can play with anybody. Um, we just got to do it on a consistent basis. We got to be more disciplined, you know. And, and that's where right now where where we're struggling. Our effort is there. I don't. I don't I'm not questioning our effort. I think we're playing very hard. Um, I think we're playing physical. We just need to play more disciplined and and, and more consistent. Well, and. A guy who has been kind of consistent is Jason Henderson. Here's a guy who's second in the country in tackles, leads the Sun Belt by a lot. Just seems to have a nose for finding the football. Some of that may be the position he plays, I realize, but he also has some skill there. Yeah, I mean, he's in, and he's and he's tackling well. And, and one thing he's doing is he's giving great effort. You know, not all of those are his tackles. I mean, he's 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 running into the alleys and making some plays and think, doing some things like that. Um, you know, we've got to make sure that we're we're shoring sure, sure it up. I mean. On defense, you never want one guy to have all those tackles. That's that's you know that's not ever what you're looking for. So we got to make sure that we continue you know to get off more blocks and do those sort of things. Um, and I think that'll you know help it out if we can start to distribute those tackles a little bit more evenly. Right, no doubt. So the other side of the ball, Zach Coons. By far his most productive game of the season last Saturday, uh, in terms of at least pass, pass catching. Um, you know, got to be nice to see him get going a little bit here. Yeah, and we knew the defense they were going to play was going to allow some of that to happen. Um, again, I've been talking about that, just some of the defenses we've been playing. If, if, you know, it's been kind of their goal to take some of those slot slash tight end receptions out of the game. Um, and so we were going to have to do something else. And, and, and so, you know, this game we knew we were, able, we were going to be able to get him, you know, some more catches, and, and we were able to do that. Um, obviously, again, we've got to be more consistent. We moved the ball, you know, up to you know the 30-yard line or whatever. We just we didn't do enough to score enough points to win the game, and and, and that's something that obviously um, we're all working, we're striving for, and take that next step. 
Next chance to go 1-0 tomorrow against Arkansas State. This whole week, what's been your message coming off a last second loss to the team? No, just the uh, same thing I said at the end of the game. I, we just have to reinvest. I mean, it, it, you know, we gotta, it's got to be something where you can't just say to yourself, all right, that hurt too much. I don't want to reinvest. So you, you've got to invest again. You've got to invest each and every week and know that it, nothing is guaranteed and, and you might get hurt again. But you've got to, the only way in order to give yourself a chance to win is by investing and, and giving your mind, body, and soul into it. And, and so that's the thing we're doing right now. Got to be welcoming, too. I mean, after two road games, to come back here at home and play in front of Monarch Nation. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be great. Obviously, you know, a little less travel, a little less wear on the body and things like that. You know, I mean, it, we haven't had to get on a plane yet, it's, but it's been some long bus rides, you know, and so, um, you know, just that wear and tear, that, that is a little bit more. So we're, we're you know, we're only going to be on the bus for maybe 15 minutes each way as opposed to, you know, three, three and a half hours. So I think that'll be good for the guys as well. Yeah, definitely works, I'm sure. And Arkansas State, the team who is coming into Ballard Stadium tomorrow, we're going to take a deep dive in the Red Wolves with Coach coming up when the Old Dominion Chartway Football Coaches Show continues right after this. The two superstar all-conference receivers are the near side. That's where he's looking. Down he goes. He fumbles the football. It's gathered up by the Monarchs at the 25. Oh, what a play this time by Sean Asbury. How do you help find someone that you don't have an image of? News 3 investigates dozens of kids missing from Hampton Roads with no picture and no way for the public to help find them. These are children. They are missing, and that is unacceptable. A former police chief says there are blind spots when it comes to tracking down runaways. We don't always investigate those matters with the intensity that we should. So why are photos of missing children falling through the cracks? I won't put it totally on the parent. News 3 investigates Monday morning at 6. Stay cool all season long. Avoid unexpected breakdowns, extend the life of your system, and reduce energy bills with Michael & Son Precision AC Tune-Up for only $69. If you can, we can. Michael & Son. At Chartway, part of our mission is to support and give back, bring hope, and do good every day. We've raised over $14 million to help children facing medical hardship. Awarded $25,000 annually to Old Dominion's Athletic Scholarship Fund and provided nearly $380,000 in awards to other Chartway student members. At Chartway, our people first mindset is about doing what's right and what's kind, unlocking potential to help everyone thrive. Chartway, the official credit union of ODU Athletics. Just outside of a town called Basic is Basic Lake, where families gather together for some basic fun. And if you have the 2022 Nissan Rogue, with a VC turbo engine and five drive modes, you can climb above Basic and find a trail where no one else goes. The 2022 Nissan Rogue, anything but Basic. Get 1.9% APR financing on Rogue, or shop our inventory of certified pre-owned vehicles. I love it here because this is our home. We've served in the Navy here. This is where we've raised our family. People here are very independent-minded. They don't need to see a D or an R after your name. I think that they focus on the person and how that person represents them. And I want to be the voice in Washington for everyone who calls this home. I'm Elaine Luria, and I approve this message. Welders help keep America running. Building and repair of ships, bridges, pipelines, and skyscrapers. Prepare for your future with ATI. Hands-on, learning by doing, in the booth. Work with steel and aluminum. Earn up to five American Welding Society certifications in structural and pipe while in school. Complete the program in just 15 months. Classes starting soon at the Virginia Beach campus. Learn more about all of our hands-on programs at auto.edu. Never feel powerless with a standby generator from Michael and Son. Get up to $1,000 off a standby generator by calling 800-948-MIKE or visit michaelandson.com. If you can, we can. Michael and Son. Third down, 15. Wolf back to throw. Going for it all, far side. That's Jennings. Jennings caught. Touchdown, Old Dominion. Wolf to Jennings. Cha-ching. And that's Ted Alexander on 94.1, the Old Dominion Sports Radio Network. If you can't make it out to SP Ballard Stadium, be sure to catch Ted on the call. And coach, the Red Wolves of Arkansas State coming in for your first ever Sunbelt football game. Give us the scouting report, if you would, on the Red Wolves. 
You know, I mean, I, I, they're a team that's played, you know, probably better than their record indicates over the last two years. I mean, they've played, they've actually, they've put together some, some good tape and they've done some really, really good things, you know, both on both sides of the ball. You know, you know, I think they've got a very, very good defensive end, um, a guy who's, who's going to be, um, have a chance to play at the next level. I think that, you know, he's a guy who we've got to watch out for and, and be able to do it. You know, on offense, they do a good job of kind of mixing it up, mixing up the run and the pass and being able to do both. And I think that, you know, they're going to provide some, some issues for us. So we've got to make sure that, you know, we stay balanced. I think this is a game that um, obviously it's, it, it's going to be another game that's going to come down in the fourth quarter and we're going to have to play well throughout uh, in order to get the win. But well, we're on the same wavelength here because I was going to ask about, about their, their one and two this year, but like you said, better than the record indicates, they played Ohio State and then they were leading at Memphis in the fourth quarter. So here's a team that, that is better than one and two, it would seem. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think that uh, we both probably feel like we should have different records, um, you know, so they're going to come in hungry. I mean, and, and Coach Jones is obviously a great coach and, and uh, has been around a long time, knows how to get his guys motivated. Um, you know, they've done, a, they've done a nice job of rebuilding their team. They have a lot of transfers, especially over the last two years. Um, the guys, so there's not a whole lot of guys who've been there for three, four years. They've, they've had some, some, uh, some transfers come in and things like that, and some guys be productive from that. You mentioned Coach Jones. You guys overlapped in the SEC for one year, right? When he was at Tennessee for his yep. first year and your last year at Vanderbilt. What do you remember about him? Obviously, a lot's changed since then. But what jumps out about him as a coach? Well, just, I mean, you know, I think he probably gets... Um, not enough credit for the way he rebuilt that Tennessee team. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they, they, they just very bluntly were not very talented uh, when he got there. Coming off some rough years. Yeah, yeah. And, and he rebuilt them, and, and they got real talented real fast. And, uh, you know, we had, a, we had a battle against them. We actually won on kind of a last-second play there at their place. Um, so, no, it was, but he did a great job of rebuilding the talent there. And, and, and if you've noticed, I mean, that's, that has not been the easiest place to win. I right. mean, all the way to, to right now, I think that people want that to be an easy place to win, but it just hasn't been. Right, no doubt at all. Well, and, you know, we talk about the three phases of the game. Special teams is, a, is, a, is an area where they seem to have done pretty well so far. They lead the league in, in kickoff return yards. You know, uh, maybe, maybe I'm looking too much into this, but when it comes to, into a game where every yard counts, I mean, in terms of field position, how crucial is that to contain that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to do a better job there. I mean, we saw, you know, um, at the end of the last game how, how important special teams is. You know, every, every yard does count. And I think we've done a nice job in, in you know, net punting right now. We're, we're doing a pretty nice job there. We need to probably pick up our, our, our intensity in some of our other ones. I thought in, in both sides of the ball, pump block and in punting, we're doing a nice job. Um, and kickoff and kickoff return, I, I still think there's some strides we need to make there. Offensively, you were mentioning how they, they see they're pretty balanced, that you do a good job of using the run and the pass. Their QB's coming off a good day, and the one running back they seem to really use in the passing game a lot. How does that present challenges for you guys defensively? Well, I think it's something that uh, um, you just got to... You we do a nice job, I think, on defense of just not disregarding the back and making sure that you know he's covered in our schemes and things like right. that. But it is something that, that can create a problem because they can quickly, you know, take a two by two formation and make it three by one or make you know get three guys to one side very very fast. So I think it's something that you know gets guys in space and things like that and does present a problem. Um, mainly, we've got to. You know, we got to play our techniques, our fundamentals, yeah. and we got to have, we're going to have to tackle. I mean, that, that, that's the thing. We, we're going to have to route match, and then once we do, we got to tackle. And we talked about this a little bit in the last segment. You get to do all that at home. You're so focused on the game, but you no doubt heard some of that energy from the fans during the Virginia Tech game. What's your message to Monarch Nation, you know, as you guys get set to kick off this Sunbelt opener tomorrow? You know, I, 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 I've appreciated the sport even on the road. That and it has seemed like you guys have traveled well. You know, yeah. I think we've traveled well, and I know that part of that is because they've been a regional game, so people could get to them. But we've got to continue to do that. I mean, the, the, every every little thing counts, you know. I mean, it, maybe it's one false start penalty or delay a game penalty that they get, and, and that could, you know, turn the tide of the game. So, uh, just one Monarch Nation out there as loud as possible, and, and all that support helps. And for me to act like it doesn't um, help energize our kids, it absolutely does. You know, that's 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 why college football is so great. And the next chance you have to energize the Monarchs tomorrow, is 6 p.m. at Ballard Stadium when Arkansas State visits Old Dominion. That's on ESPN Plus. If you can't make it. Now let's head inside the Old Dominion locker room and meet some of the Monarchs. I'm an adventurous guy. I like to do stuff fun. Um, so probably like go-karting, arcade, um, something very like entertaining that we could like learn more about each other. 
and definitely food after. Definitely have to see what uh, type of person you, person she is off of what uh, what she eat. Pre-game meal, I'm eating pasta. Uh, my mom used to make the best pasta uh, for my high school games. Uh, she taught me how, so uh, I'll make them uh, like, I would say Thursday, um, and I'll bring like a bowl with me on uh, Friday when we travel. And then they have pasta also when uh, we have our team meal. So definitely always pasta. And then right before the game, I eat gummies. I have to have my gummies with me. Ooh, I love action slash comedy movies. So it'll have to be like the Rush Hour series or the Bad Boy series. One of those. Those are my favorites. All right. Um. So he usually come in the uh, team being like, "All right, well, uh, hats off, phones out, notebooks out. Uh, if you have your phone, you shouldn't even be in here because uh, I don't bring mine in here, and I have two phones. So yeah." <laughs> Elaine Luria, so liberal, so out of touch, you have to hear it to believe it. Thank God we elected Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, and they've done so many good things. Good things? A weakened military, record crime, inflation at a 40-year high, and everything more expensive. They've done so many good things. No, Elaine, they haven't. Elaine Luria, too liberal, too out of touch. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. I'm Elaine Luria, and I approve this message. I've been an obstetrician gynecologist since before Roe v. Wade. Back then, it was frightening what women would risk in order to have an abortion. And we're right back there now. Jen Kiggins is a nurse but wants to ban abortion without taking into consideration the impact on the woman. Medical decisions should be made by patients and health professionals, not politicians. A nurse ought to know that. Now's a great time for a new camper from TAC RV. Shop the latest models of the top brands, all in the comfort of our brand new indoor showroom. We offer the best pricing and financing options available. With the area's largest service center and our great selection of parts and accessories, we can help you get the most out of your camping season. TAC RV, the area's number one RV dealer. Just over the border in Moya. This is anything like the last time we bought a car, it's going to be a long day. Welcome to Checkered Flag. Hi. Who can we talk to about trading in our vehicle? Greg can help you with that. What about financing? Greg's got you covered. Who can explain all of the vehicle's special features? Greg as well. You're Greg! I am, and I can do all of that in about an hour. Quick and easy? Easy peasy. At Checkered Flag, one friendly specialist will help you find a vehicle that's haggle-free, commission-free, and comes with a three-day money-back guarantee. Quick and easy start to finish. At Chirpway, part of our mission is to support and give back. We've raised over $14 million to help children facing medical hardship and provided nearly $380,000 in awards to Chartway student members. Chartway, the official credit union of ODU Athletics. Don't miss the ODU Coaches Show with head coach Ricky Ronnie. Now in the Sun Belt Conference, the competition is fierce. Get the game plan on this week's matchup Friday nights at 7.30, only on News 3, sponsored by Chartway Federal Credit Union. Just outside of a town called Basic is Basic Lake, where families gather together for some basic fun. And if you have the 2022 Nissan Rogue, with a VC turbo engine and five drive modes, you can climb above basic and find a trail where no one else goes. The 2022 Nissan Rogue, anything but basic. Get 1.9% APR financing on Rogue or shop our inventory of certified pre-owned vehicles. This is the ODU Coaches Show, sponsored by Chartway Federal Credit Union. Well, as we spoke about with Coach Ronnie, Arkansas State coming in at 1-2, and two, but having faced some pretty stiff competition, and the players expecting a challenge from the Red Wolves. They are a pretty good team. Um, definitely have a lot of uh, explosive players on the D-line. Um, a, a lot of guys in the defense play a really good scheme, and I think they have a great coaching staff behind them. Um, you know, teaching them different techniques and a lot of the things that we may have not seen yet um, from their D-line. What's your message to Monarch Nation about getting out here and getting behind you guys and supporting you guys for this conference opener now that you're back home? My message to Monarch Nation is um, we rushed the field last game, so I feel like they're still going to be amped up about that, and I feel like we need everybody in Monarch Nation to stand up and come to this game on Saturday. 
So we just got the players' thoughts on Arkansas State. Now we're going to go back with Coach with some of your questions. And Coach, this first one is coming from Jack in Virginia Beach. We've heard so much about the players' ideal pregame meal. What is your ideal pregame meal you know, for the head coach? I, mean, I think we've had the same pregame meal for the last 16 years of my life. Um, I mean, it's... What is your ideal pregame <laughs> My ideal pregame meal? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, uh, the, the, we've had the same one forever. I mean, there's there's chicken and there's pasta and there's and uh, there's mashed potatoes and, and uh, I always get some fruit. Um, I don't really have an ideal one necessarily. Yeah. Um, you know, I just... I do kind of eat the same. I always get the fruit first, and I eat that, and then I, I, I and then I always eat some pasta, chicken, and then I do some a weird thing. I, I have mashed potatoes, and I put ranch dressing in it, and I mix it up, which I know is kind of weird. Um, Teach their own, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that part I, I I fully embrace that. That's odd, you know. Um, but that uh, yeah, that, that's kind of what I do. I'm gonna piggyback off Jack's question. Are you an energy drink guy? Like you know, you, you guys, your schedules are so rigorous. Do you are you an energy drink guy, or are you more like you know water? And you know what have you? I mean, I, I'm gonna sit. You know, I'm gonna sit here and say it's all water and stuff. Yeah, no, I drink energy. <laughs> You're, you yeah, I mean, it, I, I wish I, Bull, right? I wish I didn't. I wish I didn't. I know it's not good for you or whatever, but uh, I mean, sometimes it's necessary. And, and I don't even know if they work. I think I think it's, it's all mineral, man. I think so too. It's, <laughs> I, think it, I, I think it's an opiate, but it, you know, it, it, it works enough. You know what I mean? I mean, it it, it, it kind of uh, makes me feel like I've got more energy or whatever. Whether or not those things work at all, who knows? It, it, they, if they if they if they're harming me, then I hope they work. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like at, least, at least I hope it's worth. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, no doubt. Yeah. I think a lot I mean, of us are in that. Field, yeah. Coach. Yeah. No doubt at all. All right. So timely question here from Ashley in Chesapeake. It's it's the Friday before a home game. What is your Friday before a home game routine? Are you out recruiting? Are you home with your family? Are you doing bed check at the hotel? Like what's what's kind of your uh, your Friday home game routine? So I stay at the hotel. Um, I try to keep it consistent. I stay at the hotel mm -hmm. in case there's any things that go wrong. But uh, for a lot of Friday home games, I will go out recruiting. Um, I'll go out recruiting, especially locally. Um, we'll go out, so uh, you know, I'll, I'll usually start dinner and, and we'll do what we need to do at dinner, and, yeah. then, and then I'll go out recruiting and do some local games and stuff like that. So usually that day, I'll also go out recruiting a little bit. Um, but yeah, so that, that that's one thing that I, I will do on local games. We'll try to get out as much as possible. Yesterday, the first day of fall, we're going to go back to Virginia Beach and Collin here. He wants to know what your favorite weather season is. I mean, I think we can all agree that football season is your favorite season. But but you know, from a from a from a specific weather standpoint, what's Ricky Ronnie's favorite season of the year? Probably spring. Okay. Probably spring. That's a fun day. Yeah, I like I like <laughs> you know, I like I like spring. I like uh, I like being able like, you know, back home. And I still do. Like my family and I will take a, a ski trip during the spring, so I like to be, still be able to ski. But then you've got great weather and all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. It's not too hot, where it's like, you know, crazy. Um, the bugs usually aren't as bad. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I'd say spring's probably probably the one I like yeah, the most. Yeah, polo and shorts comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there's nothing better than you know weather where you can run wear like a light sweatshirt with shorts. Yeah. And and my Birkenstocks. That's pretty. That's pretty much. That's that's pretty much it right there. I think a lot of people would agree with you. We just wish shot Virginia. We a little bit more with some uh, some more occasional spring weather. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Virginia's a little weird. It, 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 I, I have noticed that you know the springs are like the days are either a little colder than I want them to be, yep. or like in most cases, <laughs> or much much warmer than I want them to be. Yeah. So yeah. So but it, it, in general, spring would be it. No doubt at all. Well, coach, thanks very much. And if you guys have a question for the coach, just email askthecoach at wtkr.com, or you can reach out to me on any of my social media channels, and we'll get coach your question. Well, still ahead, Old Dominion boasting one of the nation's best receivers, but his story going far beyond his highlight reel. That's when the Chartway Old Dominion Football Coaches Show continues right after this. The world may seem dark at times, but I believe there is always a bright light ready to shine. I'm here to inspire, to amplify that light. I'm here to lift you up, to let you laugh, and make you feel right at home. I will tell your stories, celebrate your families and our communities. I promise to always do my best to brighten up this amazing place I call home. Game starts at 20, this slip is empty. I got to call KG. KG, what?
What I up? I got nothing for you, Fox. Ah, come on. Jalen. You want to tell? Yeah. Don't call somebody on live TV. Well, like you answered. Have other friends, friends anyway. Marshawn, Barry. Listen, I need some tips. I'm like L.A. L.A. Dallas. That's Dallas. How Dallas. How about Detroit? Barry, 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 Barry,